Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the High Speeds live class. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to mute everyone. Here we go. All right, let's go ahead and get started with some common words. The, I, to, and, a, of, was, he, you, it, in, her, she, that, my, his, me, on, with, at, as, had, for, but, him, said, be, up, out, look, so, have, what, not, just, like, go, they, is, this, from, all, we, were, back, do, one, about, no, if, when, get, then, into, would, no, there, I'm, could, don't, ask, down, time, didn't, want, I, them, over, your, are, or, been, now and by any think see hand it's say how around head did well before off who more even turn come smile way really can face other some right there only walk got try something again after still thought door here, little, to, because, away. All right. Now I've got some words. They all start with either initial H, initial R, or initial L. Here we go. Ready? Hope. Rope, lope, lent, hat, rent, reap, leap, heap, hack, race, leave, read, life, hail, lab, hill, roll, rock, late, how, hype, right, lie, ho, lip, ram, rug, hug, lug, line, ride, hide, roam, home, loam, hoop, rise, loop, lead, red, head, her raid loin, rack leaf half, huge lodge ridge, ray hook light, huff love rough, hem line rat, lot rot hot, lace hair rate, hid lid rid, lick rule hick, rub hit lake. All right, let's do some names and addresses. Here we go. Mr. Gary A. Newsom, N-E-W-S-O-M, P.O. Box 31417, Houston, Texas, 77231-1417. Mr. Kenneth L. Kinney, K-I-N-N-E-Y, 5117 Lonsdale Drive, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27405. Angela C. Bell, B-E-L-L, -L, 721 Rico Street, Harbor City, Maryland, 21215. Joan B. Paro, P-A-R-O, Forest View High School, 2121 South Gobert Road, Arlington Heights, Illinois, 60005. Cindy G. Espar, E-I-S-P-A-H-R, P.O. Box 37A, Kendall, Kansas, 67857. Miss LaToya M. Boone, B-O-O-N-E, 973 Marshall Street, Gary, Indiana, 46404. Brenda K. Carr, C-A-R-R, -R, 2345 Sarah Boulevard, Toronto, Ohio, 43964. Donna R. Hines, H-I-N-E-S, A.H. Robbins Company, 1211 Sherwood Avenue, P.O. Box 26709, 
Richmond, Virginia, 23261. Barbara T. Corrigan, C-O-R-R-I-G-A-N, P.O. Box 2329, Millersville River, Pennsylvania, 17561. Good evening. <laughs> All right. Now I've got some consonant compounds and their doublets. Here we go. Sharp turn, small snack, gray barn, heart trouble, firm stride, cruise ship, slight smirk, free press, bent twig, steep climb, feeble cry, sweet shop, ground level, stone step, gold plate, broad brim, furled flag, strong brace, hard turn, thick stew, landscape, wild stag, wheelchair, grand slam, fresh wound, hard drive, field crops, bleached blonde, green paint, short stack, steady grip, marked cards, great threat, clear glass, snowstorm, frail child, grilled trout, clean pants, plastic trim, gray stripe, cheap shot, drop cord, blue sky, thin blouse, great trip, cross stitch, brief stay, double play, white clouds, quick twist, dark brown, cold spell, bridge span, cruel sneer, smokestack, black stripe, slow drip, shrill squeal, warm breeze, blood stain. Okay. All right, so I've got some tangle tamers. Here we go. Let's see here. Electronic conductor, huddled masses, neighborhood association, disappointed spectators, between performances. Privately adopted, academically inept, identifying information, confidentiality protected, adoption agency, confidentiality waiver, rehabilitation counseling, humongous selection, computer peripherals, romantic trellises, ventilator rhythm, patterns and notions, alternately pressing, quietly persuaded, peripherally evident, inadequately explained, accessories available, radiology department, foreign exchange student, physical therapist, constantly misread, discriminating or discriminating consumers, and extensive amenities, professional community, suburban campground, international symbolism, hand-painted walls, microwave combinations, recently distributed, threatened species. All right. Now, these words all start with EX, okay? We won't get through all of them today, but they're great a great drill for EX words. Here we go. Exact, examine, exemplar. Excerpt, examination, exacerbate. Exacting, exactly, excess. Exactitude, example, excellently. Exaggerate, excavator, exchange. Exalt, exceed, exert. Exceptional, exclusive excrement, exasperate, exclude, excursive, accept, examinee, excre excretory, excitable, excruciating, exciting, exempt, execute, exclaim, excuse, exhibit, exit, extrovert, exhaustion, 
exert, executive, exhaust, existence, exhibition, exhale, excursion, exemption, exercise, exhume, ex executory, exertion, exigent. And that should have been executory. They start to become tingle tamers. Let me just state this. There are more, but we'll finish the rest on Friday morning, okay? Didn't want to give them all to you in one day. All right. Now, these are going to be um, just different alphabet letters with numbers, okay? So think of it as like a, it's like a license plate drill, okay? All right, here we go. 5823 FNG LT345PY GNBA890 F589PHG 23DRF35 2RDS580 4DS Two five four zero four T R F five six seven nine K L P three two eight nine eight J H G Y five eight nine seven five G H C S R four five six E zero K L T six seven eight five B N T seven eight six S three four G H five nine C eight one three C H D P K E one four eight V zero four five six N C E two Two five four six APT HXT nine two eight zero VER B eight E eight five eight H FN three six WR four eight D nine zero Six V B C five seven six H G five seven six five one eight J H U eight seven nine H V B eight seven eight K V B C five four three L K L N two three Five zero four D F R four seven eight J I H three four F R four three five R G T F D F eight two three B H F eight H nine W E three Nine H J four D seven eight, and the last one R three four B N W nine. There's more, but I'm gonna overload you too much in one day. All right, common phrases. Um, from short sentences and short phrases. Here we go. Give it back. My new place. Most of the animals. My last name. I know why. Mom says now. I need help. Move over. Through the line. Kind of nice. Same time tomorrow. Change your clothes. The following day. Give it away. Show us around. The air is warm. Another old picture. Where in the world? Put it there. I'm an American. 
My home is large right now. This must be it. Home sweet home. The men asked for help. You must be right. Get to the point. Help me out. It's your place. Read the book. All right. This is going to be just a list of briefs. Um, a lot of these you probably write out because they don't come up all the time. Okay, if you have any questions, just let me know and I'll give it to you. Okay, here we go. Deposition, determine, direct evidence, duty, element, emphasis, emphasize, employee, enter, equal, exclusive judges, exclusive judge, exhibit, existence or non-existence, experience, expert witness, explain, eyewitness, facts and circumstances, fair and impartial, fair consideration, fair preponderance of the evidence, fairly and impartially, field of knowledge, follow, follow the law, for or against, for your consideration, from time to time, gentleman, gentlemen, given, greater weight of the evidence, guilt or innocence, guilty, guilty or innocent, if you find, in a case, in order, in other words, in that case, in the case, in this case, indictment, inference, influence, information, injure, injury, instruction. All right. Okay, yeah, just do some, these are just phrases. You're gonna phrase as much as possible. Whether he wants, whether I want, whether I wanted, whether or not he wanted, whether or not he wants, whether or not I want, whether or not I wanted, whether or not you want, whether or not you wanted, whether you want, whether you wanted, which he wanted, which he wants, which I want, which I wanted, which you want, which you wanted, who he wanted, who he wants, who I want, who I wanted, who, who want, who wanted, who wants, who you want, who you wanted, will want, would want, you want, you wanted, he was, how was, I was, if he was, if I was, it was, she was, so he was, so I was, that he was, that I was, that was, there was, this was, we was, what he was, what I was, what was, when he was, when I was. All right. Here's a list of contractions. Aren't, doesn't, haven't, shouldn't, can't, couldn't, don't, wasn't, didn't, hadn't, isn't, weren't, hasn't, wouldn't, won't, there, they've, they'll. He's, she's, whose, it's, that's, here's, theirs, where's, what's, let's, there, we're, your, I'd, you'd, he'd, she'd, we'd, they'd, I've, you've, we've, who've, they'll, they've, I'll, you'll, he'll, she'll, we'll, they'll, who'll, it'll. Okay, I'm gonna go through and uh, very quickly give you all of the states, okay? Here we go. Rhode Island, Alabama, Alaska, South Carolina, South Dakota, Arizona, Tennessee, Arkansas, Texas, California, Utah, Colorado, Connecticut, Vermont, Delaware, Virginia, Florida, Washington, Georgia, West Virginia, Hawaii, Wisconsin, Idaho, Wyoming, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Pennsylvania, Oregon, Kansas, Oklahoma, Kentucky, Ohio, Louisiana, North Dakota, Maine, North Carolina, Maryland, Massachusetts, New York, Michigan, New Mexico, Minnesota, New Jersey, Mississippi, New Hampshire, Missouri, Montana, Nevada, Nebraska, 
and United States. All right. Now I know I read this in the mid speeds class, but I, it's a great drill. Um, so I'm gonna read it to you guys too. So if you heard it, you know, um, just, don't, just know that it's not for, you're not doing it for, for nothing, okay? It's, it's a great drill, all right? So this is the drill that uses the word practice there, when, who, and this, on, to, that, from, now, where, does, come, why, what, in, if, any, there, did, do, but, about, well, with, had, knew, should, have. Okay, here we go. Did he or she say about what? What about it? This came from there. Why did that come from there? Where does this come from? Where did that come from? Who is on that there? And why does it come and go? And if it comes and goes, when does it go there? Did this doctor from there go then? Then where did it come from? When it does come, if it comes from there, but what about if this doctor and that person there did that? Now in that, where we knew what had been said about this, that he did when she had come there with them, they came with her to see about him and her and he and she and those and them and we and me and my and why, oh why, and did he and do you, and this is and that is and these and those and come and does and comes and goes, and if it had come from there, where is it now that it is here? So what did they do then? And when did you go up there? Why did you go up there with them? What did you do last night? What did you do after you went with them? What did you say to them? And what did they say to you? Is that what you said to them? What did they say? Where did they say it? Then what did they do? Then what did you do and what did they do? What did you do and what did they do when you got into their car? For about an hour, we talked to them over there. And did they take you back home then? When you got to the intersection, then what happened? And then where did you go? Did you go into the gas station then? Where did you go when you got in there? Did you go up or down or did you stay on the same floor? What did they ask and what did you say to them? Did there come a time when he was there to set aside those things over here? They needed to please put them over there. All right. It's one of my favorite drills because it's all the little words that we usually miss, you know? All right. Okay, I'm going to give you, um, these are just some common briefs. Again, if there's anything you wanna know, let me know, okay? Here we go. Eastbound, westbound, southbound, northbound, took place, take place. Refresh my memory, refresh your memory, more than, more or less, excuse me, directing your attention, bedroom, living room, dining room, bathroom, Policeman, policemen, police station, police department, police car. All right, last drill. Actually, we've got two more drills, sorry. This one's gonna be an internet drill, okay? Different internet websites, here we go. Oh, just in case you're watching this um, and you're, you don't know what these are, these briefs, you can use these if you want www. is w a u t watt dot com is d a u m dom dot net is d w e t duet dot gov d w o f dot org d w o r g at is a t with the flag forward slash is f a s h if dot is right in the middle of the email address you can just write d o t with the flag um and then backslash, if you get that, that could be B-A-S-H with the flag, okay? All right, so here we go. 
www.popads.net, www.googleusercontent.com, www.miniclip.com, www.cntv.cn, www.bigfishgames.com, www.popcorn.com, www.games.com, www.iplay.com, www.cnn.com, www.twitch.tv, www.bbc.co.uk, www.wikia.com, www.fog.com, www.addicting.games.com, www.go.com, www.board.com, www.shockwave.net, www.freeridegames.com, www.gamehouse.com, www.globo.com, and www.people.com. And usually most of the time they don't even say the www, but it's still good practice in case they do. and It won't throw you off. All right, last row. All right, so I am going to read this backwards and then I'm gonna read it going the regular way forward, okay? And this is a, a, a long sentence here, okay? Here we go, we're gonna do it backwards first. Here we go. It deliver to stamp another a needed he and 10709, California, Figuresburg, 8179 apartment, street 195th, north, 1432, two moved, had friend her, that saying it returned, postman, the but, 94629, California, Numbersville, 3412, apartment, street, 218th, 36271, at friend, her, to letter, A wrote, Sarah. All right, so here it is going forward. Sarah wrote a letter to her friend at 17263 218th Street, apartment 2143, Numbersville, California, 92649. But the postman returned it saying that her friend had moved to 3241 North, 195th Street, apartment 9718, Figuresburg, California, 90701, and he needed another stamp to deliver it. Right. Oh, I have to give you this. I'm sorry. I always pull too many drills. This is a really good drill. I have to pull. I have to give you this. It's initial consonants SPR in sentences. Okay. I promise this will be our last drill. Here we go. Spread the word about spring. In the spring, a young man's fancy turns to sprockets and sprinklers. Sprig the lawn and use the sprinkler. Maybe the Sprite will make it sprout. Spruce up in the springtime. Two sprinters sprinted to the spring. Springtime is sprightly. Spread the spray over the sprat. Try not to sprawl by the sprig. Sprains on springboards are spreading. Spruce up for spring and don't sprawl. Try to sprint to the spring corn. Sprites and sprats are very spry. Spray the sprigs and sprats. Sprinklers are spread around. The sprinter had a spry and springy step. Spruce up the spruce in the spring. Jack Sprat sprang toward the springs on the springboard. Let us spray, said the sprite skunk. For his last spree, he sprayed springs and sprigs. Spring sprung when she spread sprigs. A springboard is not for the spring chickens. He steps spryly instead of sprinting in the spring. Spread the spruce and sprig the sprouts. 
Spring wood is in spruce, not sprinklers and sprockets. To sprunt and sprint, you must be spry. Sprat loons are caught by springy spratters. She sprained her ankle sprawling. The spray from the skunk spread. Under the spreading chestnut tree, the sprightly sprinter sped. A springboard is like a sprite. The sprocket was bruised up. A young proud sprout is sprightly. Your sprocket is sprung. Old men are spryer. The springy sprite was sprightly. In the spring, we have sprinklers. He was only a sprout, but he could sprint. Hope springs eternal. A springboard is springy. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and do some q and A. I'm gonna start off. The first one, it's going to be one that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. The questions are just all over the place. Okay, so can't really think about it. All right. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. I always like to date it because I never wanna forget that we've covered it. All right, here we go, just Q&A. Um, I'm gonna, I'll do this at uh, 200, okay? Here we go. We are going to the beach. It's such good weather at the moment. Okay, how stupid you are. You left the keys in the door overnight. I'm sorry, would you like a cup of coffee? No, thank you. How nice of you to come to wish me a happy birthday. You're welcome. I can give you a chunk of cheese for the children, gross. You aren't 21, are you? No, ma'am. You aren't from America, are you? Yes, I am. Don't be silly. You are silly. Is there any work to do in the garden? Certainly. Always listen to your parents. No way. There are no buses today. Why? You don't like ice cream, do you? Of course I do. Who has eaten a bar of chocolate? I have. Have a cup of tea. Perfect. Do sit down. Where? You aren't going to Rome, are you? Not now. I'll help you. Give me a piece of your luggage. Here. My son has finally passed his driving test. What a relief. Oh, no. Andrew paints so well. I'm sure he is going to become a famous artist. I know. My garden has been completely spoiled by the storm. What a disaster. I'm sorry. Don't smoke in your room. I won't. There isn't any ketchup on the table. Where is it? You don't know her, do you? I don't think so. Can I have some lemonade, please? It's gone. Drive to the end of the street and turn left. Then go where? Insert a coin. Then what? Don't open the window. It's hot. You haven't been on holiday, have you? Never. John has a big house. I think it's a bit ridiculous. I don't. You haven't got a car, have you? Yes, I do. I'm going to the baker's. I need a loaf of bread. What kind? Shut the door. I already did. All right, and, and I said we were going to do some Q&A, and I meant like doing the drill Q&A, but now we're going to go right into our literary. Okay. All right, so this is actually a poem. It's called Hungry Mungry. Okay. Here we go. I'll read this at, um, I'll read this at 200, okay? Here we go. Hungry Mungry sat at supper, took his knife and spoon and fork, ate a bowl of mushroom soup, ate a slice of roasted pork, ate a dozen stewed tomatoes, 27 deviled eggs, 15 shrimps, nine baked potatoes, 32 fried chicken legs, a shank of lamb, a boiled ham, two bowls of grits, some black-eyed peas, four chocolate shakes, eight angel cakes, nine custard pies with Munster cheese, 10 pots of tea, and after he had eaten all that he was able, he poured some broth on the tablecloth and ate the kitchen table. His parents said, oh, hungry Mungry, please stop these silly jokes. Mungry opened up his mouth and gulp, he ate his folks. And then when he went and ate his house, all the bricks and wood, and then he ate up all the people in the neighborhood. 
Up came 20 angry policemen shouting, stop and cease. Mungry opened up his mouth and gulp, he ate the police. Soldiers came with tanks and guns, said Mungry. They can't harm me. He just smiled and licked his lips and ate the U.S. Army. Ah, sorry, hold on. Sorry. What happened to it? Hold on a second. Oh, no. Hold on a second. Oh, no. I thought that, um, it's Milford. I thought there was more. Oh, yes. There it is. All right. Sorry about that. The president sent all of his bombers. Mungry still was calm. Put his head back, gulped the planes, and gobbled up the bomb. He ate his town and ate the city, ate and ate and ate. And then he said, I think I'll eat the whole United States. And so he ate Chicago first and munched the water tower. And then he chewed on Pittsburgh, but he found it rather sour. He ate New York and Tennessee and all of Boston town, then drank the Mississippi River just to wash it down. And when he'd eaten every state, each puppy, boy, and girl, he wiped his mouth upon his sleeve and went to eat the world. He ate the Egypt pyramids and every church in Rome and all the grass in Africa and all the ice in Nome. He ate each hill in green Brazil and then to make things worse, he decided for dessert he'd eat the universe. He started with the moon and stars and soon as he was done, he gulped the clouds, he sipped the wind and gobbled up the sun. Then sitting there in the cold dark air, he started to nibble his feet then his legs, then his hips, then his neck, then his lips, till he sat there just gnashing his teeth, cause nothing was nothing, was nothing was nothing, was nothing was left to eat. <laughs> so I have a bunch of these poems that are all stapled together, and for some reason it got put on the wrong, it's not on the very next page. I have to fix that. All right. I'm going to give you some opening statements. I'm gonna start this at 180, but I will, I'll work my way to 200 on this one, okay? It's not very long, defense opening statements. Here we go. There have been several statements as Mr. Kratz has already alluded to in his PowerPoint presentation, and this was in his opening statement. It starts off in a progression where Brendan says, Stephen Avery killed Teresa Halbach and it progresses to the point where he indicates he participated and the state will argue to you later and offer evidence throughout the trial through the officers that they believe that this progression of audio taped statements from at the school, the videotaped statements at the police station, and then the final May 13 videotaped statement as a progression to the final truth. So what we want you to consider is three things. While you're watching these videotapes, and we agree, very powerful videotapes, very important videotapes, but like in the story, two different stories, there's a different perspective, a different theme. So we want you to look at three things. Cooperation, similar to what the state offered. They want you to look at what it cooperated. So we want you to also focus on what is not cooperated. There are dozens of details that go uncooperated in the statements. Cooperation simply means that there's something independent that can prove that the statements are true. Some other independent source that suggests that what you heard is accurate. But there are dozens of instances where their details are uncooperated. The second to consider is the inconsistencies. There are a number of inconsistencies throughout this progression of statements. When you watch these statements, take note of the different changes from one statement to the next. Simple, details that seem to be mundane, unnecessary change from statement to statement. And though the state will try to suggest that it's an escalating progression from the first time that they met with Brendan Dassey to the last time he talked to them, it's really a roller coaster ride of the truth, up and down, 
One statement says one thing, the next says the other, and it just goes that way throughout this progression. Some of the changes are not even logical. Right. Now these are jury instructions. Okay. I'm going to start this at 200. I will work my way to 225. Here we go. Then we have the witnesses, questioning witnesses. There's direct, there's cross, and sometimes redirect and recross. We have an idea of how long that will take, but we can't say absolutely how long it will take. Those things will make a difference. So it can be a little bit of a burden, but I'm not reluctant to ask you to make the sacrifice. Maybe you need a shorter trial. That's a thing I will consider, but some of the people have already given a lot for their country. There's a lot giving very little. I'm not counting waving the flag on the 4th of July. I'm not counting placing a sticker on the bumper of your car. Voting is a good thing, but you can even mail that in. This is the kind of thing we need to do in person. This is the foundation of our system of justice. The fairness thing is what draws everybody here. It's not economic, it's fairness. We have people that come over here because they want a good job. We have almost as many people coming over here because they don't want to be persecuted unfairly. I have some people here I want to introduce. On my left, I have my court reporter. I have two of them. They'll take turns. On my right is my chief clerk, my only clerk. She keeps everything running. On my right is also my chief deputy. I have deputies coming in and out at different times, and that is normal. So let me give you a brief summary about the case. This is just allegations at this point. Nothing is proven until people get up on the stand and say things that you feel are true. We have Brooke Marie Rodders, Omar Hutchinson, and Francine Epps that are charged with the murders of Marvin Gabriel, age 22, and Milton Chavez, age 28. They are also charged with two special circumstances, alleging that the murders were committed during the commission or attempted commission of the crime of robbery, and that the defendants did commit multiple murders. On August 27th of 2006, Michael Gabriel and Miguel Chavez were last seen leaving a bar in Riverside. It is alleged that both men were murdered at the National Inn Motel, located at 420 South Lincoln Street in Corona. On August 29, 2006, their bodies were found in an area of the trunk of a car located in the Gavlin Springs area of the unincorporated area of Riverside County near Lake Matthews. Now remember, these are just allegations at this point. The jury commissioner has already determined that you meet the minimum requirements to serve as a juror, but I will repeat them anyway. Citizen of the US, 18 years of age at least, live in the state of California, resident of Riverside County, not previously convicted of malfeasance in office, or not convicted of a felony and not had your civil rights restored, sufficient knowledge of the English language, not currently serving on a grand jury or any other kind of jury at the present time, not subject to conservatorship proceedings, not subject to conservatorship proceedings in any court. So please raise your right hand if you do think one of these things does apply to you. Okay, now, thank you very much. There is a ca calendar up there on the wall and it will give you an idea of what we're doing and the time frame. We basically go from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. The X's are the days when you are not here. So you can see there are a lot of X's. That's because I have to pick two other juries. What happens in this case is those people who have the time, I will send them down to the jury assembly room and fill, have you fill out a questionnaire today. So get it done today. And then you are going to come back on May 3rd. For you, the trial will really start on May 3rd. We'll select the final 12 and get down into the evidence, probably about May 5th or something about that date. Do you want to turn it over? And you can see there are days off that we have. For example, every Friday I do have to do a civil calendar. I'm off the second week of May. I have to go teach a class. So there are some spaces there. The third Wednesdays of the month are court furlough days. There's nobody here, or if we are here, we are working in the back and the doors are closed. So that gives you an idea what the schedule is going to be like. I want you to now, going on to a different topic, 
The law is contained in the jury instructions. You hear follow the law. Everybody talks about that, right? Here's where we actually do it. Holding up a book, there are two books like this one. They're called California Criminal Jury Instructions. They contain the law. I will read it to you a little bit later at the beginning of the case, most of it at the end. I will read to you a shortened version of it. You must not talk about the case with anyone. Do not let anyone talk to you about this case. You must not do any research on the internet or anywhere else. Avoid reading any media accounts about the case. That's obvious stuff. A lot of jury instructions are obvious. Others are a little bit more complicated, but this is the law. I just read it to you and you will follow it. You can say, I'm on a murder case. It's going to take seven to 11 weeks. Other than that, you can't say anything to anybody, not even other jurors. You can talk about it all you want when the case is over. Wear your badge so the others will know you are jurors and not to talk around you. The attorneys, I've already told them to avoid you and I don't think they are going to do anything wrong at all, but we want to avoid the appearance of impropriety. Not only do we want to avoid improprieties, but even the appearance. Next, we will determine if any of you should be excused because jury service would impose an undue financial hardship. The law is very strict in granting hardships. The law views jury service not only as a privilege of citizenship, but also obligation of citizenship. We're all here when you want the fire department to put your house out or you're flooded out and you want them to come save you. It could be a two-way street, you know. It should be a two-way street. If we only selected jurors that had nothing else to do, we wouldn't have a good cross-section, maybe just a bunch of retired people. That's why we do these kinds of things, okay? They are important decisions and we need society to make them. And in a moment, we will go through these hardship parts, okay? So we're going to have the two groups of people out there right now, the people who can serve the seven to 11 weeks with all these spaces that we have, but that's okay. Spaces are okay. It gives you a chance to do some of your own things that you have to do. We have that group of people right there. That group I'm sending down to the jury assembly room to fill out the questionnaire, then to go home and return May 3rd for actual in-person voir dire by the attorneys to select the final 12. And then there's those people who have a situation, got a vacation or you have a new job that you just started and you can't take time off, things like that. That is what we'll talk about those things. The people who can serve the time, I want you to, on the podium are two pieces of paper. One is the schedule, the other is an order for me telling you what to do. I want you to take one of each of those pieces of paper, go down to the jury assembly room, get a questionnaire from the jury commissioner, fill it out and come back on May 3rd. All of you that can serve the time, go ahead and take those two pieces of paper and go on down to the jury assembly room. All right. How are we doing on time? Okay, let's start our Q&A. I'm going to um, start right at, well, I'll start at 180 and then move my way into one, or I'm sorry, 200 and then back to um, all the way up to 225. Okay. All right. This is a court case. We're going to start with the court. I'm just going to this book down here. All right. Here we go. Now, as I understand it, Mr. Bristol and Mr. Abackerly, you're going to listen to the tapes that have been modified and compare that to the transcripts that we have, the modified transcripts, and make sure that deletions were all done appropriately. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. All right. Your Honor, may I inquire? Certainly. We had the two or three tapes returned today with copies that were made to the play, or excuse me, played to the jury, and we have designated that those are exhibit numbers on the copies to be played. What are the exhibit numbers? It should be 32A, 33 has no modification, 34A and 35A. At least that's what the court's understanding is. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, we are in recess until nine tomorrow morning, Tuesday, October 31st, 9 a.m. 
and we will try to take care of any issues that may have been raised by your review of the tapes this afternoon. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Court is now in recess at this time. Good morning. This is the matter of people of the state of California versus William Myers. We are open in court out of the presence of the jury. Present is Mr. Abackerly for the district attorney's office. Mr. Bristol is present along with his client, Mr. Myers. Anything that needs to be placed on the record before we bring the jurors in? No, I don't believe so, except I have indicated to the court and counsel, I would like to move the remainder of the exhibits into evidence. Can you identify the exhibits by exhibit number? Yes, that you'd like to exhibit. Let me inquire before we do that. Mr. Bristol, you're going to have your first witness this afternoon at about 1.30? Yes, Your Honor. And how much longer will you need with Detective Gonzalez? I'm not going to ask any further questions on my cross-examination. I don't know what will come up with Mr. Abackerly. Could we do, maybe we will recess early this morning. Okay, could we do it at that time so we don't hold up the jurors? That's fine. Okay, fine, why don't we do that? We'll make copies of the exhibit list also. That will make it easier. Anything else that needs to be placed on the record before we bring in the jurors? No, no. Mike, if we could have the jurors, please. Let's see, juror number four, did you have a question, sir? Yeah, I don't have a, that's juror number four? Yes, I don't have a notepad. Okay, let me check in the closet. Mr. Bailiff, can you please check in the closet? Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The record should reflect all jurors are present. Present are also Mr. Abackerly for the district attorney's office. Mr. Bristol is present along with his client, Mr. Myers. Good morning, Detective Gonzalez. You're still under oath, sir. And Mr. Bristol, you may inquire. No further questions of this witness at this time. Thank you very much, Mr. Abackerly. Thank you, Your Honor. Detective Gonzalez, yesterday, defense counsel asked you about the follow-up investigation that you did with regard to the vehicle that was involved in this case. Were you able to determine during the course of your investigation when the victim, Michael Williams, actually purchased that vehicle or came in possession of it? Yes. And what was the date that your investigation indicated he had obtained the vehicle? I believe that would have been on Saturday, August 8th of 2012. And what was the date that the victim was killed? It was August 8th of 2012. Okay, so the same day that he obtained that vehicle? Yes. Is there a reason that you did not check with every car lot where that vehicle could have been purchased in the Los Angeles area? Yes, there is. And what is that? Well, it would have taken a tremendous amount of manpower and hours to do something like that. Without more information as to where that vehicle was actually purchased, we wouldn't have done that. Is there any reason why you wouldn't contact, say, all of the registered owners of Jeep vehicles in Southern California? Yes. Why is that? Well, I'm going to assume that there's literally thousands of people that own Jeeps out there. And to try to narrow it down to Michael Williams purchasing one of those from some location and from some person, again, that would have taken a tremendous amount of time. And I'm not even sure if it could have been done. Okay. Was the issue of the Jeep being purchased significant? in your determination on the perpetrator of the crimes in this case? Not in itself, no. There was also some questions about the size of the shoes that were recovered back in Ohio. And I believe you indicated that they showed that they were size 11. Yes. In your investigation of various crimes, have you come into contact with persons that are involved in gang activity? Yes. Is there a particular style of clothing that is worn by persons that are involved in gang activity? I'm going to object foundation and also ask to approach the bench again. Certainly, counsel, approach the bench, please. There's nothing in the discovery to indicate that my client is involved in gang activity or anything of that nature. He's never said he was a gang member. That has never been established. I'm going to object on the grounds. There's no discovery. There's no foundation. That is irrelevant to the proceeding. The relevance? Well, counsel has brought in the issue of the size of the shoes, I believe that the witness would testify that the typical attire of a person that's involved in gang activity is oversized clothing. Let's assume that that is the case. What do you have to show that Mr. Myers is involved in gang activity? Well, during the course of the interview, there is a discussion about a person that he's associating with being involved in gangs. And at one portion, while he denies that he is a gang member, he does indicate that he was jumping into the rolling 30s gang. He denies that. 
That's in the transcript. He says that Mike was in the Rolling 30s gang and that he doesn't know why, but they jumped him into that gang, even though he denies being a gang member. He doesn't say that he's a gang member, though. No, he says that he was jumped into the Rolling 30s gang. Do you know where that is in the transcript? I can find it. Do you have that marked on the, yes, transcript? Why don't you go ahead and get that? I didn't mark that particular page. It's going to take me a minute to find it. Okay, there you go. It's page 27 toward the middle of the page. Show the document to Mr. Bristol. That means that law enforcement has him in the rolling 30s. Although they keep trying to put him in that gang, he says he's not a member. He says that they kicked, I don't know why, meaning law enforcement. He doesn't say that they jumped me into the 30. It says they got me into the 30, meaning law enforcement. Let me see that again. All through the transcript, they keep accusing him of being a gang member. No, you guys are trying to do that, but I'm not. I agree with that. Anything further? No. All right, for the evidence code section 352, the court finds that the prejudicial value outweighs any probative value and thus is sustaining the defense's objection. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Detective Gonzalez, during the course of your investigation of various cases over the last, say, three to four years, even five years, is there a particular size of clothing or somewhat significant about the size of the clothing that certain witnesses or persons suspected of crimes wear? I'm going to object without further foundation and, again, relevance as to various crimes. The objection is overruled. You may answer, sir. Yes, there is. And can you tell us what you have observed with regard to your investigations and the size of the clothing that persons wear that are involved in these types of cases? My experience is that when I'm dealing with individuals that are gang members, I'm going to move to strike as non-responsive. May I approach counsel, approach the bench, please? I believe this is an intentional thing on the part of counsel. He proceeded to go into the area. He knew involving this would bring in the gang activity. I'm going to move for a mistrial at this time. I believe this is intentionally done by counsel. Mr. Abackerly, well, the question was certainly intentionally asked since counsel has raised the issue of the size of the shoes in this case. I'm trying to, the issue of the size of the shoes became relevant when Lloyd Grant said he got shoes from Los Angeles or from Los Angeles to Cincinnati. Okay, I'm just trying to clarify what the significance of the size of the shoes are. All right, I don't believe you could lay a foundation as an expert that people who commit various types of crimes wear a certain type of clothing. I think it would be difficult to do without making reference to gang affiliation. The objection is sustained. The motion for mistrial is denied. Would you instruct your witness? Can I have just a second, Your Honor? Certainly, thank you. You may proceed, counsel. Can I have just another moment, Your Honor? Certainly. Detective Gonzalez, is it unusual based on your contact with various persons in different investigations that those persons wearing they do wear oversized clothing? No, it's not. Okay, so a person say wearing a shirt that is too large for their actual physical size is not unusual? No. What about pants? No. Is that also true of shoes? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna switch transcripts for just a couple more minutes. I did get to uh, 225 with that one. is a little bit easier so I'll um, start at 225 and I'll work my way to 250 okay let me see it looks like defense is questioning there we go did you discuss at that time how the accident happened no we didn't when was the next time you talked with her probably like three days after three days after the first call or after the accident no three days after the first call where were you when this conversation took place? I was at home. Where was she? At her house. Did you call her or did she call you? I called her. Anybody in the room with you when you placed the call? No. In sum and substance, what did you say to her and what did she say to you? I just asked her if she was going to go to the chiropractor. What did she say? She responded no and is that the sequence or essence of your phone call? Yes, that's it. Nothing else was said? Nothing else was said. Didn't talk about how the accident happened? No, we didn't. Did you have any other conversations with her since the accident? Since that time, no. When you last saw her, was that the day of the accident? Yes. 
You haven't been to her house since? No. Haven't been out in public at any shows or entertainment activities where you have seen her? No. Other than your lawyers and your healthcare providers and Iris, have you discussed this accident with anyone else? No, I haven't. Didn't talk to your mother about it? Oh, my mom knows about it. Did you talk to her about it? Yes. What did you tell her? Pretty much what I was aware that I knew what had happened. Do you know how the accident happened? Pretty much what I told you. Okay, what you saw was that you were in the number two lane and then the red Jeep was behind you in the number one lane and it made a turn, a turning movement into the left rear of your vehicle. Is that correct? Correct. And would it be fair to say at that point in time, Iris lost control and started spinning around? Yes, I have no other questions. I have just a couple. Now, Ms. Zuda, my name is Raul Lomas, and I represent two of the passengers that were in the red Jeep, Austin Allen and Rick Gary. I just have a few questions for you in reference to Iris Lopez. She was living at 1987 Frankfurt with her parents, correct. Do you know what the parents' names are? No, I don't. First name or anything like that? No. Do you happen to know if they still reside there on Frankfurt in Fontana? No, I don't. Do you have any way of getting a hold of her brother? It would be really hard because I'm at work. I'm never, I know, I don't. Do you know anybody who knows her brother? No, I don't. Probably so, but I'm not sure. I have to look around, but I'm not pretty sure no. Do you know anybody who knows her parents? No. Fine. It's really hard. E for effort. If you do find out, would you contact your lawyer and give him that information? Sure. Thank you. Now, I just have some questions on your injuries. As a result of this accident, did you suffer any cuts? Just on my forehead. Did you need stitches for that? Yes. Okay, whereabouts on your forehead? Towards, right here towards where my hairline starts, right here in the front. It probably was, it was shattered glass. I remember taking the little pieces out. Was it actually bleeding? Yes, it was bleeding, yes. Do you have any scarring from that? No, no, not that I can recall, no. Besides that cut on your forehead, do you have, did you suffer any other cuts or just the burn to my neck from the seatbelt? But that actually didn't bleed, it wasn't, it was red, it was like it wasn't bleeding or pouring. It was like little bubbles of blood that were just there. It was, it was just like real tender, really hot. Would you call it more like a bruise? It was purple and it was red at the same time. Yeah, pretty much like a bruise. Did you have any fractures to any part of your body? No, just my foot, that's about it. Did your foot fracture? Yes, it's fractured, yes. Was it put, it was bruised, it was, it was in real bad pain. It just pretty much was bruised. It wasn't a fracture, it wasn't broken. Fracture means broken in essence. It wasn't broken as far as you know, no. Did the doctor, any doctors tell you either at the hospital or the chiropractor that you had any fractures? No, what about the swelling? Any swelling to any part of your body as a result of the accident? No, just, just my foot, that's about it. That swelled up, yeah, that swelled up. Now, how long were you at the Loma Linda University as a result of the accident? Overnight, overnight, and half of the morning. And then from the time that you were actually released from the hospital the next day, to the time that you went to the chiropractor, how many days elapsed? A day, one day, yes. Now let's see if I can get all of this straight. You suffered pain when, at the time of the accident, when you went to the hospital, you had pain to the both of your shoulders, your neck and your left foot. Did you have pain at the same time? All at the same time as well? Yes, you didn't mention that. I didn't know if you had it at the same time. Yes, okay, I have nothing further. Anything else, counsel? No, I have no questions. Propose the following stipulation after we find out what time your turnaround is. It is two weeks. Okay, pretty common, isn't it? Let's go off the record. Back on the record, upon completion of the original transcript and transmittal of the original transcript to counsel for plaintiff, the court reporter will be relieved of her duties under the code. Counsel for plaintiff will obtain the deponent's signature, which is me. Mr. Golden will be counsel for the plaintiff for these purposes. You want to start again? Take two. So Mr. Golden will obtain the signature of the deponent under penalty of perjury and advise counsel for co-plaintiff and the defendant for any changes or corrections prior to 48 hours before the scheduled arbitration and in the event that the original transcript is unsigned at the time of the or unavailable at any other further proceeding, a certified copy will be appropriate for all purposes. Counsel, Mr. Golden will retain custody and control of the original proceeding and transcript and have it available to all further proceedings. So stipulated, so stipulated. All right. Let's see, how are we doing on time? All right. So I think for this one, um, 
because I have, I have to be somewhere. So I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do is just read this once at 225. Okay. And then what I'll do is I will read it back and you can just follow along and that way we'll do it real quickly. Okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. So I'm going to just read this at 225. Here we go. Ready? How long before this accident did you purchase that bike? A few years? More than two years? No, it was about two years. Did you sell the bike? No. Did you give it away? No, I didn't. Do you still have it at home? Yes. Other than the changes you have already described regarding Richard's leg and his inability to do certain things, have you noticed anything else unusual about Richard since this accident? He can't participate in things that other children do. Other than that fact, have you noticed anything else? No, he is still doing as well in school as he was before the accident. Yes, before September 13, had Richard been involved in any type of accident whereby he sustained bodily injury? No, since that date until the present time, has he been involved in any type of accident other than the fractured left arm? No, other than his stay in the Arcadia Methodist Hospital. Do you recall Richard being hospitalized for any nature since he was born? Yes, when was that and for what reason? When he was a few months old, he was kept in St. Luke's Hospital overnight because of suspected rupture. That was when he was two to three months old? Yes. Has he had any other visits to the hospital prior to September of 2012? Nothing. By the way, have these bills been paid? Yes. All right. Let me know when you find your spot. How is that? Good. Okay. Okay. It's not, not bad. I'm I'm exhausted, so I'm just like oh. hanging on. But it was uh, it wasn't bad. I I'm ready whenever you are. Okay. All right. So I'll you follow along and I'll read it. Okay. Question: How long before this accident did you purchase that bike? Answer, excuse me, a few years. Question, more than two years? Answer, no, it was about two years. Question, did you sell the bike? Answer, no. Question, did you give it away? Answer, no, I didn't. Question, do you still have it at home? Answer, yes. Question, other than the changes you have already described regarding Richard's leg and his inability to do certain things, have you noticed anything else unusual about Richard since this accident? Answer, he can't participate in things that other children do. Question, other than that fact, have you noticed anything else? Answer, no. Question, he is still doing as well in school as he was before the accident? Answer, yes. Question, before September 13, had Richard been involved in any type of accident whereby he sustained bodily injury? Answer, no. Question, since that date until the present time, has he been involved in any type of accident other than the fractured left arm? Answer, no. Question, other than his stay in the Arcadia Methodist Hospital, do you recall Richard being hospitalized for any nature since he was born? Answer, yes. Question, when was that and for what reason? Answer, when he was a few months old, he was kept in St. Luke's Hospital overnight because of suspected rupture. Question, that was when he was two to three months old? Answer, yes. Question, has he had any other visits to the hospital prior to September of 2012? Answer, nothing. Question, by the way, have these bills been paid? Answer, yes. How'd you do? Um, not bad. Not great, not bad. Well, that's okay. Like you said, you're tired, so you're, you're working through it, you know? Yeah, it, I mean, I probably could have figured out most of it. It was just pretty sloppy. Yeah. <laughs> But, and I, I think I dropped during one question, so okay. just like a few words, but it wasn't too bad. Good, good. Felt slow after that last bit you did before 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, I was, um, I was moving on that. Let's see here. Let, I'm going to look at this and see what this is. Um, five. Yeah, I was reading between 240 and 250. You were right, though. It was easier material, so yeah. it didn't it didn't really feel that fast, but yeah. it was still pretty fast. Yeah. But yeah. anyways, well, thank you so much. You are welcome, and you have a great night, Catherine, and I'll see you on Friday morning. I'll see you then. Okay, have a great night. All right, you too. Bye. Bye.